So, my old friend, Marshall Presnell, who was the first subscriber to this channel and is also something of a uh, YouTube kingmaker, he was put in a Facebook timeout for sharing a trailer to the film The Hunt. Now, if you don't know what this film's premise is, it's that elite liberals are kidnapping Trump supporters and transporting them to a hunting preserve where they then hunt them down and kill them. Marshall had the temerity to suggest that this was a bad movie to ever make and certainly horrific in the current political climate. And Facebook immediately took that post and put him in a time out. Now, Marshall has now written a very excellent note on his Facebook describing the technical issues in very great detail. I invite you to look at it. It gives a great technical account of the process. It's called Doing Time in the Face Doing Hard to Time in the Facebook Jail, and you will see a link to that in my description box below. However, there is something rather insidious and frankly downright evil at play with regards to Facebook's timeout system that merits some discussion. You see, Facebook's business model is to provide extremely targeted advertising. Now, I see this on myself on my Facebook page that I maintain for this channel. Which, by the way, feel free to uh, follow that page and like it. Here, there is a link to it below. I also have a group associated with that page called the Close Personal Friends of Tales from SYL Ranch. P feel free to join that group if you like. Cam just says, YouTube uh, some days is not much better than Facebook. Oh, I'm going to get into Google. And Google, of course, Google, YouTube, same thing, really. But when you have a channel or business page like mine, Facebook makes it very, very easy to make targeted advertising, very targeted advertising for very specific groups, for very specific lengths of time, for a fee, of course. And, and some of the fees aren't bad. Uh, if you add to this, you know, my experience in IT for 40 years, that in a business of any small, beyond a small size, the company is essentially driven by the marketing department. One of the things you learn early on in a company of any size is if you need to do desktop support, for example, the first people on your list, regardless of how bad, you know, you might have something that's infecting the whole, infecting the whole company, but Regardless, if your CEO, upper management, has a problem with their computer, they go to the top of the list, everybody else is at the bottom. And right below the management is marketing. Um, they drive the companies most of the time. And of course, that wouldn't happen if marketing didn't produce some pretty tangible, specific results. And so Facebook's algorithms, well, they gather data on everyone based on their posts. Given the sheer computing scale, and it is enormous, it categorizes us all in every way imaginable, including our politics. So I'm quite certain that Marshall uh, is, um, you know, a Facebook knows Marshall is a constitutional-leaning conservative, and that I'm a constitutional-leaning libertarian. And we know now from the American Psychological Association that the other part of Facebook's business model involves addicting users to a dopamine rush that occurs as a result of what's called rewards-based behavior. Now, this isn't just me talking. There is a great article from Psychology Today called Why We're All Addicted to Texts, uh, Twitter, and Google. And there's a link to that below if you want to read it. But in general, to kind of summarize, whenever your posts are liked or given positive feedback, you get a mild dopamine rush in your brain that makes you feel good. And then you spend more time on Facebook or Twitter, they do the same thing, in expectation of receiving that same dopamine rush again. And this is a physical addiction. It actually causes people physical distress when they are deprived of use of the platform. So yes, Facebook and Twitter are employing the exact same methods as the worst sorts of drug dealers. Cap just says Facebook only cares about money and how to make more money. Yeah, they do, but they care about other things more, and that's what I'm going to talk about here. So we also know from insider testimony that Facebook will um, censor based on leftist principles. It is 
nothing less than attempting to mold behavior in order to turn the public at large into leftists. So as a conservative or a libertarian, Marshall and I are people whose behavior needs to be molded from Facebook's perspective. And consequently, their algorithms are going to evaluate your posts and decide whether or not you need active moderation by putting you in a timeout. And this is all underpinned by this addiction to a dopamine rush that you will be missing during your timeout. So when you put in a timeout, basically you're discovering the limits to which you're allowed to behave. And you dare not overstep those limits again. You just dare not. Otherwise, the dopamine rush is going to be absent and you're going to feel uh, very uncomfortable. Facebook and Twitter are just absolutely ruthless about this. And you must just simply toe the leftist line or be cut off from the source of your addiction. And to categorize this whole thing as evil would be the understatement of the e century, frankly. And to be honest, I'm surprised that I've been allowed to go as far as I have on Facebook. And I assume this is because I have a channel page that's promoting a type of business, uh, even though I can't afford it or not. But I'm at least a potential source of revenue. And I suspect that Facebook maybe gives me a little greater latitude to do certain things than they might somebody otherwise who is not really a potential source of immediate revenue in terms of giving them money for the marketing. So that is kind of what Facebook is doing. It's evil. My only suggestion always is get off of Facebook. Um, try to get off of Facebook and Twitter and wean yourself off of that dopamine addiction that you've got going on. Whether you know it or not, you almost certainly have it. The only reason I don't is because I have to be on YouTube and, and Twitter and Facebook. I kind of have to be. Uh, I'm on lots and lots and lots of social media. But uh, Facebook and Twitter, uh, Twitter in particular, are absolutely key. Um, I, I, when, I, when I market my videos on Twitter, I see my you know, view counts jump instantly over on the BitChute side. It is a really good way to do marketing. So that's why I'm in it. But I don't think I have the same addiction because, particularly on Twitter, I am totally and completely clinical about it. You know, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy engaging my uh, viewers both on Facebook and Twitter. But you always have to remember, you know, anytime I'm doing it, I consider these marketing platforms first and foremost, and that's what you should do. And so when I'm posting stuff up there, and if I'm interacting with you, um, I'm trying to do it in a way that's both honest, but at the same time, make myself look better, put myself in a good light so that, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, pushing you away. I'm pulling you in. Ah... Uh, Let's see, Captain Jesse says, if someone is uh, not uh, surfing Facebook, then Facebook is not st uh, stealing like from that person and brainwashing that person. Yeah, which is why I suggest getting off of it. Leave it completely. Go to places like MeWe, um, Minds, uh, any of those places. I I've mentioned it in another show. Uh, probably time to go through and kind of do them one at a time. Uh, that show was very long, and looking back now, it's too long. They need to be about 12 minutes in length. So I should probably go back and, you know, revisit them, making individual videos about uh, free speech alternatives. Um, but there are different platforms where that addiction that is absolutely part of Facebook's uh, business model is not occurring. Uh, and Kevin just says, whenever I go, I go out. I do not turn on my data. Yeah, that's that's not a bad idea. Um, for me, it's difficult for me to just get away from using my phone, and that's because after so many years in IT, you know, your phone just became indispensable. You know, everybody wants to get a hold of you all the time, 24/7, 365, and you just kind of can't get away with leaving your phone behind. So. Uh, partly I'm burned out after working 30 years in tech. I think that's partly true, but there are other factors involved that I don't really go into publicly for the most part. So, But that is uh, what uh, Facebook is doing and Twitter. My only suggestion is to leave those platforms. Um, They're certainly toxic otherwise. 
did a video about it uh, recently, my very my most previous video, uh, called the Babelfish Effect. And it kind of goes through and describes how it is that we are so horrible to each other on Twitter and Facebook and how that's actually kind of dangerous. Um, you know, don't, don't get into flame wars. Just be nice people. That's, <laughs> that's my general um, suggestion about that. <laughs> so, Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.